Ashburton Meat Processors is a privately owned abattoir. A change to its waste management program has cut waste disposal costs. Manager Brad Cook explains. In 2004 the local landfill here was closed and the company needed to have another option to get rid of their pig hair, paunch content and other biological waste because it was going to be carted to Cates Valley um, north of Christchurch for disposal which would be a significant cost to the company so they had looked at alternatives to get rid of that waste material. Only thing I add is a bit of lime to keep the pH level up for the worms. Worms like a, a neutral pH. The material we're dealing with when it comes out of the works tends to be a bit hot. It's over, about, around about 30, a bit over 30 degrees. The worms can't stand much above 25. Well, 25 is about their maximum actually. So we uh, try and keep it as dry as possible and let it sit on top of the worm, not letting water run into the worms. It'll just drive them out and kill them. These are tiger worms. <clears throat> they are composting worms. They work in the top um, six inches, 150 mils, millimetres of soil. Um, they don't go, well, they will go lower, but that's their working area, is there. That's their habitat. They eat roughly 80 to 100 percent of their weight per day. The theory is it should be able to feed the worms today and it should be gone tomorrow type. But we run a cycle around about two weeks here. So if you like, there's five tonnes a day, roughly, they're eating per day. A composting situation uses heat, and uh, with worms, there's no heat process involved, and they also preserve the microorganisms and micronutrients. And the key with vermicast is the microorganisms, uh, which are being depleted in our land, or around the or around, particularly in the farming land, with artificial fertilisers. And um, but worms maintain the worm gut. Uh, worms don't digest their food like we do, they use microbes. So in a worm's gut, there's about six billion microbes, I understand. Uh, so, and that, that's what processes the material. It's not an acid process. So it preserves microorganisms. The worms in here will be fed today. And that'll give you an idea of under here, all the worms that are under there, waiting to be for their new feed. This is a, a top feeding system, the bins, so we feed on top. The worms come up with the, the food, they chase the food up, uh, and, and they leave the vermicast underneath. There's about 10, maybe 10 kilos of worms in there. On the whole farm, there's roughly five tonnes of worms that are working here. There is breeding worms in here, they're breeding all the time. The breeding worms breed every 21 days, so that's their cycle. So there's two systems here, there's windrows and boxes. Uh, the windrows uh, have to be harvested by hand. The boxes can be handled mechanically, where we can use a front end loader to, to lift these out and tip them out. They're all made so they can just unlatch and they just spring up, upside down and tip out. And for the site we've got here, we have to use bins. I mean, another site that had a better foundation, you might use concrete rather than uh, have a different type of system. This is the end product. We, we class it as vermicompost. Um, uh, this is what the gardeners rave about. And uh, it's just like, just like dirt. But it's full of uh, micronutrients and microorganisms. The worms have a unique ability to get rid of um, uh, disease and stuff as uh, I believe they act a bit like, uh, they neutralize everything that touches their skin. So everything's neutralized. So the, the soil is actually it's very healthy. We'd be spending less than $100,000 a year on getting rid of our waste at the moment. We think it's a really neat, tidy model. It achieves all we want it to achieve. It takes away the pig hair and the cardboard, as I said, and the punch content. We're able to have it um, disposed of in a reasonably hygienic manner. The worms consume the food, and we end up with an end product, which we're able to sell. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.